In this part of the lecture, I will teach you how to write the dal and the dal. I will also teach you about the Arabic vowels, which are a, u, e. That's it. These are the only vowel sounds in Arabic. A, u, e. The only difference is that they come as short vowels, a, u, e, and long vowels, a, u, e. We don't have the sounds a or o or any other vowel in Arabic. That's it. We have a, u, e. All right. So these are the vowels in Arabic. This is the a, u, e. And these three long vowels are three of the Arabic alphabets. This is the alif, this is the waw, and this is the ya. We will cover them separately in future lectures. But right now, we will understand their purpose as vowels. So this sounds like a long a, this sounds like a long u, and this sounds like a long e. The short vowels in Arabic are these characters. We call them harakat or tashkil, and these come on top of the letters or under the letter. This is a fatha, and it sounds like a. This is a dhamma, and it sounds like u. And this is a kasra, and it sounds like i. So we call these long vowels and these short vowels. A, u, i, a, u. E. The letters we're studying today are the dal and the dal. They're called dal and dal. However, they're phonetics or they sound like da and the, as in th in the word the or this and that. Da and the. The dal and the dal are written like this. We start from top. We go back and then we go forward on the line and they come on the line. They look like two thirds of a triangle like this, the dal as well. We go back and then we go forward on the line and the, the dal has a dot. The dal and the dal are one of the six Arabic alphabets that connect only from one side. Remember when we said that the Arabic alphabets have different shapes? beginning of the word, middle of the word, and end of the word, in terms that they connect inside the word. The dal and the dal connect only from the right. They don't connect with the letter that comes after them to the left. So the dal, middle or end of the word, would look like this. It would have a connector. This is the dal, and this is the dal. It would have only a connector to the right if it was preceded with a letter that connects. So the dal and the dal would only connect from one side like this. That's it. They connect only from the right side. They don't connect from the left side. So if they were inside the word, for example, like this. See how the dal connects to the letter before it with this little connector, but it doesn't connect to the letter after it. So there is a space over here. Even if this letter connects from both sides, it wouldn't connect with the dal because the dal does not connect from the left. So it's important to know that the dal and the dal only connect from the right side. They don't connect from the left side. We call them kicking letters when we're explaining this concept to children in that they kick the letter that comes after them and they don't hold hands with the letter that comes after them. They only connect with the letter that comes before. So now let's explain the concept of the vowels attached to letters. So the dal and the dal here with the fatha or the strike on top, this would sound like da. With the dhamma, this would sound like du. With the kasra, or this strike at the bottom, this would sound like D. So, da, du, di. Dal with an alif or the long vowel would sound like da. Da with a wow would sound like du. Da with a ya would sound like di. So, da, du, di. 
Notice the difference between the short vowels and the long vowels. This is da, this is da, du, du, di, di. Similarly, the dal as well. Da, du, di. Da, du, di. And as I explained, the dal and the dal connected would look like this. They would only have a connector to the right. So this is the dal connected, da. This is du, this is di. And inside the word with a long vowel, it would look like this. Da, du, di. Dal as well, it's exactly like the dal, but it has a dot on top. Da, du, di. Da, du, di.